building was built in 1924. In 1998, I was looking for some place to move and this building had been abandoned. It was a crack house and it was uninhabitable. I bought it out of foreclosure. There was a tremendous amount of maintenance that had to be done. Uh, there wasn't anything planted here at all. Uh, I had moved from another house that I had planted a bunch of trees in and knew that trees take a long time to grow. So along with redoing the floors and redoing the roof and redoing the ceiling, I immediately got to work about at thinking about what I could plant here. Um, first person I worked with was a talented young man by the name of Giancarlo Moscardini, who has a company called Edible Eden. And I gave him free reign. I said, look, we want to do this with California natives, uh, medicinal herbs, succulents. We want to consider the longevity of the plants. We want to consider a permaculture attitude, how things will progress and how this garden will progress over time. We want to put in some fruit trees. Um, and things which will be nitrogen fixing so that ultimately uh, the soil will get better over time and not worse. Uh, I've had very little formal training as a gardener. I've have, I have the good fortune that Travis Smith, who was my original gardening teacher, worked for the city of Berkeley helping to organize community gardens and school programs under Alice Waters' program for schools in the gardens in the schools. Uh, Travis is a brilliant guy, a wonderful teacher, has been very patient with me. Um, I've worked with him, I've done a lot of reading on my own, there's a tremendous amount of material available, and most organic gardeners I've found have been very eager to share what they, they know. Uh, every time you go to the farmer's market and speak to the farmers, they're eager to speak w about what they know. Uh, um, Ruben Ziegler is a, a wonderful teacher of mine. He's taught me how to graft trees. He had to graft with, with one apple tree, for instance, you can have in your front yard eight or ten varieties of apples if, you're, if you just graft different species on an original rootstock. Uh, two books that have been very important to me are Fukuoka's book, The One Straw Revolution, which was written in Japan in the 40s talking about growing a tremendous amount on a very small scale. And another book written in 1864 by a man who left his job as an accountant in New, Jersey, in New York, moved to New Jersey and got 10 acres. That book is called 10 Acres Enough. But there's a tremendous amount of reading out there and uh, just reading and talking to people. So there's a whole bunch of different varieties of potatoes that I'm planting here and it's pretty easy. When you go to the store and you buy two potatoes of each variety, there's one, there's a different kind of potato, there's a third kind of potato, there's a fourth kind of potato, here's a fifth kind. So you're looking at a total investment of there, a 50 cents maybe, and this is good seed crop for everything I'm going to need. And it's not going to provide me with enough food this year, but it's again it's a long-term project it's a question of getting these in the ground and transplanting and what I'll show you when when I'm done planting is we'll transplant some of last year's of the year before potatoes and by this year there should be about 15 or 20 different varieties of potatoes growing here total investment I can't say more than about seven or eight dollars and there'll be a substantial amount of food created just by that little tiny investment Okay, the, the building that I'm sitting in front of is about a 10 by 12 foot greenhouse that I built over the course of this summer out of reclaimed materials. The plastic roofing is the only material that I had to purchase new. The doors here, the handles, the windows, all of the siding, everything was reclaimed from the waste stream. The steps that I'm sitting on are pieces of driftwood that I took from the bay. The doors were in someone's backyard, I had to rebuild them. All of this is siding that used to be fence boards. All of this is wood that used to be fence boards. This is lumber that was thrown out. All of the pressure treated lumber used to be part of a garage. I spent about three years thinking about how to build this structure in a way that would be safe and would blend in with the environment where to build it and collecting recycled lumber which I stored on the garage. 
And once I started construction, it went fairly quickly because I had already built it in my head. Um, even the windows are reclaimed. What I've done is planted a variety of fruit trees in the public right of way so that everyone walking up and down the street, when the fruit trees are in season, can pick fruit off the trees. And you might ask, okay, what's gonna be left for you? Probably nothing at the moment, but if all of my neighbors and all of your neighbors did the same thing and we all planted fruit trees and herbs and things along the public right of way, rather than having to go to the market, we could walk up and down the block, pick what we needed for dinner and go home and cook it. So if you look over here, this is fennel. Fennel is a wonderful plant. It grows without any help at all and it can be used for a variety of things from cooking to being used as an armature on which to grow beans or tomatoes. This is an apricot tree. Continuing down right here, this is a grapefruit. And understand that one would say there's a lot of trees in a very small space. And where we as humans, as urban farmers, come into play is we have to keep control of these trees and get them to trim them so that during the winter time we shape them and sculpt them so that they're under control so that we have access to the fruit and they are able to grow in conjunction with one another and actually help each other. Continuing right down here, there's a little avocado tree. And then right above the avocado tree, mixed in with all the jasmine, is a grapevine. So this summer, this grapevine will be growing right in front of my front door. I'll be able to reach up and grab grapes. Right here, this little guy is a pear tree onto which I've grafted three different types of pears. So in a few years, from this one tree, there'll be three different varieties of pears growing here that people can just eat as they're walking by. There's a little lime tree there. These guys are shade trees. They're not fruit trees. The city planted this tree, and this tree creates a beautiful fragrant, fragrant flower. Perhaps eventually I'll replace it with another fruit tree. This is a wonderful plant here. This is called white sage. If you've ever been to a farmer's market or to a Native American ritual, they'll make smudge sticks. They'll take a plant, wrapped up like a stick, set it on fire, blow it out, and then they'll wave it around to create smoke. That's what this plant is, white sage. This is Rasmataz. He's in the way. He's always in the way. He knows he's in the way. This is a peach tree grown from a seed that was discarded by people at the farmer's market. It started on my roof in a nursery, and as it got to the correct height, I planted it in here. It's very young, this is its second year. Probably in a couple of years, we'll start to get fruit from it. This vine that's also growing here, fighting through the jasmine, is called lemon verbena. This is lemon verbena. You can take this and dry it in the shade. Once you dry it, you can make tea out of it or add it to other teas if you don't have lemon. It smells amazing. There's a rose bush in here that's fighting its way up through the jasmine. So this summer, there'll be a whole bunch of roses up here, probably as high as 12 feet high. We've got another apricot tree right over here. And again, the apricot tree, now's the perfect time to trim it. So we're trying to arrive at a balance. Each one of these will produce a piece of fruit. So this year I've trimmed it back so that it's not going to be anybody's way. It'll continue to grow and it'll bear fruit on this limb, but probably in a year or two as this limb grows and as this limb grows out, they'll be in the public right of way and I'll have to use the winter time to carefully understand what this tree is going to do and cut it back. There's an avocado tree over here that probably shouldn't have been planted, but it was rescued from a nursery and they were going to throw it out and I just couldn't let it die. 